Newcastle United women's football during the Mike Ashley era was barely a blip on his radar and despite the best efforts of the Newcastle United Foundation, the charity wing of Newcastle United, the girls, the, the women's football team for Newcastle had to completely fund their own participation in the competitive divisions. Now put that into perspective, we're not talking about teams representing the Black Bull or the Red Lion here, we're talking about women's football representing Newcastle United and wearing their badge. Now, the male teams at whatever level at the same time, they didn't face the same sort of exclusions that the girls did. Now, this didn't stop Mike Ashley exploiting a marketing opportunity. To sell more kit in the club's flagship stores at the Metro Centre, Eldon Square and here, and to add insult to injury, the model was offered and the team a 20% discount on the kit that they were going to wear to play uh, if they bought the kit. That particular model for Newcastle United women's team back then was left back Steph Gregory. And Steph Gregory, during uh, that period with playing with Newcastle, had also been crowned Miss Northumberland and Miss Newcastle. Steph now plays as a centre half for Gated Rutherford Ladies, and they're due to play the Newcastle United women at Kingston Park in the FA Cup, two o'clock kickoff on October the 23rd. Steph, welcome to Tyneside Life. Thanks for joining me. Um, so you got this big match on, on Sunday against Newcastle United women in the FA Cup. Yeah. Um, you must have um, some, um, I don't know, complicated feelings about this being ex-Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling about it? Um, really nervous, but I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be um, a good opportunity. Um, so yeah, more excited than nervous. And as a centre half, and I know a thing or two about the Newcastle women. I think you're going to be marking Katie Barker, who's quite a prolific goal scorer, not just for Newcastle United women, but in that particular division. How tough is that going to be? Pretty tough. <laughs> yeah, um, we're definitely the underdogs, but um, we'll have a good challenge and a good battle, so I'm going to give it my best shot. And um, I understand you've had uh, three or four spells at Newcastle, um, coming through the academy. Um, so what, what's your story with Newcastle United? Um, yeah, so I kind of came through Newcastle Academy um, from being about 12 years old up. Um, I had a couple of spells at a couple of local clubs. I actually went back to play uh, for Newcastle. Um, I was between the first team and the reserve team. Had a spell again at another local team, then came back to Newcastle, went to uni, came back to Newcastle and now eventually ended up at Rutherford. So you know quite a lot about the um, the setup um, in the, in the, during the Mike Ashley years, certainly. Uh, I understand it wasn't uh, quite straightforward, you know, you were being looked after by, uh, looked after by the Newcastle United Foundation who did a great job by, by all accounts, but what sort of difficulties did you face being a woman playing for Newcastle United during those Mike Ashley years? So we didn't really have much in the way of funding at all, um, so everything that we kind of got funding wise we had to either do ourselves through bag packs or we had to get through sponsorship from like local businesses a lot of our parents chipped in and um, we we're really kind of hard up um, I mean we we're so hard up that my dad used to drive the minibus to help us out so we didn't have to pay for travel um, so yeah a bit different to what things are like now I think so you you were in Newcastle United strips playing for their badge and you had to raise sponsor sponsorship what sort of sponsorship yeah. and how much did you have to raise so in most recent years, so the last time I was back there would have been about 2017. Um, last time it was about 250 per player per season. So that would cover things like your training kit, your match kit, your facilities, your travel to matches and things like refs fees, things like that. So you had to raise per person, per season, £250 each to pay for your own kit to play for Newcastle United. Yeah. Staggering. <laughs> it just... I kind of get my head around that. And you mentioned backpacking, what's that? Um, so <laughs> you don't really do it now, but we used to stand at the end of checkouts and we pack people's bags and they would just throw us their loose change whenever they could. Um, so yeah, we would regularly kind of be seen backpacking for our kit. <laughs> That's absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I can't imagine for a second any of the boys' teams for Newcastle United had to do the same thing. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, we did have some backing from two of the old Newcastle players. So at the time, um, Joey Barton and, and Robbie Elliott, they both paid 100 quid towards a shirt each um, back in 2012. But in terms of support kind of from the men's team, we didn't really have much at all. So, Steph, I mean, I, I can't imagine it was all, you know, doom and gloom and difficult challenges playing during those years there must have been um, 
individuals who are really supportive and really help you along. Do you want to give a shout out to any of those people now? Yeah, um, so Lisa Bell, um, I think she's quite high up in the, the Newcastle Foundation now. She coached um, a lot of us from being a really young age and she's always been a great supporter of ladies football. Um, Phil Eden and Anne Eden. Um, Phil was the chairman of Newcastle United Ladies back in 2012 when I was there. They did so much for the club um, and I think me and a lot of the girls who used to play would be eternally grateful for how much time and effort they put into the club. Um, unfortunately, Phil has passed away now, but it would have absolutely made his day to see how far Newcastle United Ladies have now come. And there's also a story about, um, because you've had a modelling career, um, I, I don't, do you want to tell the viewers a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so I kind of ended up getting into modelling through my football. Um, I was at Newcastle um, Ladies at the time and I decided to enter the Miss Newcastle um, beauty pageant competition um, just kind of to raise kind of awareness and, and yeah, just basically get the club name out there really. Um, so I ended up um, actually winning Miss Northumberland back in 2012 um, and as part of that I had been contacted by Newcastle and had been asked to model some of the ladies um, sports kit for for the club which I did which was a great opportunity um, and as a thank you they said that they would give us 20% off the first team's home kits. Can I just get that right as a thank you for you modelling the kit uh, that the club's going to make money from they were going to give you 20% off kit for you to wear on match days yeah. for their benefit. Yeah and it was just the first team that got that discount. I just I kind of I just kind of get me my head around that. I mean, you should. I mean, you should have had the kit for nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, the um, Steph, can you can you model this this gear, make it look great for us? <laughs> I will tell you what, we'll give you twenty percent off. I mean, how do you feel about that? Looking back, how do you feel about it? I mean, considering it would have cost around twenty thousand to run our whole club for the season, it was a bit a bit disheartening considering what the men got, but. Things have changed now, I think. I think so. And, uh, of course, Newcastle United now we're under new ownership. And I know you're not directly involved with that. But it's really exciting. You know, Amanda Stavely wants to... She's all up for female empowerment, women empowerment. She's all up for getting uh, Newcastle United women into the, the Premier League of women's football. What sort of ripple effect do you think that has on the, the whole of the football community, for girls in particular? Oh, a, a massive effect. So I know recently that Newcastle ladies actually got to play at St James's Park. That's something that I would have absolutely loved to have done when I was there. Um, but it, it means now that the, the girls are getting known and they're out there, they're becoming role models. So for my under 11 team, my girls team that I coach, they've actually got their names printed on the back of their kits. They know who they are. Um, yeah, they're looking forward to the game on Sunday because obviously we're playing them, but I don't know who really they'll be supporting us or, or Newcastle ladies, but either way. It's good. So back to Sunday and the match at Kingston Park against Newcastle. The last two matches they've had there, they've had over 2,000 supporters. You're probably going to have two, maybe 3,000 fans there. How does that feel? <laughs> a bit nerve-wracking. Um, we've got a lot of supporters coming ourselves, um, which is great. Um, it'll be nice to actually play in front of a crowd because not many of us have done that, so it'll be a good experience. So there you go, guys. Um, Sunday the 23rd, Kingston Park, 2 o'clock. If you want to see Steph centre-half take on Katie Barker, the prolific goal scorer for Newcastle United, and see that battle. But the whole game, you know, it doesn't matter where your allegiances are. You know, this is all about supporting women's football. Get yourself along. It's only a few quid, and I guarantee you'll have a fantastic time.